John Milton's poetic style. The poetic style of John Milton, also known as Miltonic verse, Miltonic epic or Miltonic blank verse, was a highly influential poetic structure popularized by Milton. Although Milton wrote earlier poetry, his influence is primarily grounded in his later poems, Paradise Lost, Paradise Regained and Samson Agonis This. Milton's most notable works, including Paradise Lost, are written in blank verse, that is, unrhymed iambic pentameter. He was not the first to use blank verse. It was a mainstay of English drama since the 1561 play Gorbuduck. But his employment of the form outside the theatre, his frequent enjambment, and the relative looseness of his meter was very influential, and he became known for the style. The poet Robert Bridges analyzed Milton's versification in Milton's Prosody's monograph. When Miltonic verse became popular, Samuel Johnson mocked Milton for inspiring bad blank verse, but he recognized that Milton's verse style was very influential. Poets such as Alexander Pope, whose final incomplete work was intended to be written in the form, and John Keats, who complained that he relied too heavily on Milton, adopted and picked up various aspects of his poetry. In particular, Miltonic blank verse became the standard for those attempting to write English epics for centuries following the publication of Paradise Lost and his later poetry. Paradise Regained Paradise Regained by John Milton was published in 1671, and this work is associated with his renowned epic poem Paradise Lost, with which it shares theological themes. Milton composed Paradise Regained at his cottage in Buckinghamshire, England. It consists of four books and 2,065 lines, in contrast to the 12-book, 10,565-line Paradise Lost, making it a concise epic. In Book 1, Jesus is baptized by John, prompting Satan to convene demons to plot against him, believing he can deceive Christ as he did Adam. Meanwhile, God informs the angels of Satan's overconfidence. In Book 2, Simon and Andrew, witnesses to Jesus' baptism, search for him after losing sight of him. Mary, too, worries about her son. Satan returns to his demons, anticipating a more complex temptation than with Adam. He considers various temptations but realizes pride is the key test. In Book 3, Satan flatters Jesus, challenging him with worldly achievements but Christ rejects violence and glory. Satan tempts with duty, but Jesus embraces suffering. Satan shows him the world's kingdoms, offering alliances and power, but Christ declines, leaving it to divine providence. In Book 4, Satan tempts Jesus with Rome and offers him all kingdoms, but Christ rejects the blasphemy. Satan attempts to interest him in Greek wisdom, but Jesus prefers the Psalms and Prophets. Frustrated, Satan subjects Jesus to a tempest in the wilderness. Angels assist Jesus, celebrating his victory, and return him to Mary. Samson Agonistis Samson Agonistis is a tragic closet drama written by John Milton, and it was published alongside Paradise Regained in 1671. The exact timing of its composition in relation to Paradise Regained remains uncertain. However, it is widely believed that Samson Agonistis was initiated around the same period as Paradise Regained and might have been completed shortly before publishing. The play delves into the final phase of Samson's life, drawing its narrative from the biblical book of Judges. In this portrayal, Milton, who himself was blind at the time of writing, presents Samson as a once mighty warrior who has been rendered blind and imprisoned by the Philistines. Samson's predicament is famously described as eyeless in Gaza at the mill with slaves. Despite his physical and emotional suffering, Samson eventually overcomes self-pity and despair, experiencing a resurgence of his former strength. He ultimately brings down the pillars supporting the temple of the Philistine god Dragon, resulting in his own death along with that of his captors. Samson Agonistus intertwines elements of Greek tragedy with Hebrew scripture, reshaping both literary traditions. Milton holds the belief that biblical narratives excel in their classical forms compared to those of Greek and Roman literature. 
he contends, of the style and uniformity and that commonly called the plot, whether intricate or explicit, they only will best judge who are not unacquainted with Aeschylus, Sophocles and Euripides, the three tragic poets unequalled yet by any, and the best rule to all who endeavour to write tragedy. The play explores several central themes. Violence Acts of violence are a prominent theme, underscoring concepts of revenge and the destruction of God's adversaries. Women Samson Agonistus focus on the betrayal of Samson by his wife Delilah, portraying love and its consequences negatively. The play associates women and male desire for them with idolatry against God and suggests that sacredness cannot coexist within marital love. Samson's fall is precipitated by his holy status and his desire for Delilah, leading to his betrayal and emasculation through blindness. The play criticizes women for their deceitfulness, reflecting a broader commentary on women's roles. Religion Samson's despair upon losing God's favor, represented by his loss of strength, is a central theme. His quest to return to faithfulness to God parallels the plight of non-conformists during the English Restoration, who faced persecution for their unwavering adherence to their religious beliefs. Blindness Blindness is a significant motive in Samson Agonistus, influenced by Milton's own gradual loss of sight. Samson's blindness holds symbolic significance, serving various roles within the narrative. It is not a direct reflection of Milton's own blindness, but rather it carries multiple symbolic meanings and resonances throughout the play. These themes collectively contribute to the depth and complexity of Milton's exploration of Samson's tragic story and its broader implications. John Milton on his blindness When I consider how my light is spent, also known as On His Blindness, is a famous sonnet composed by John Milton. This sonnet delves into Milton's personal struggles with blindness and his evolving relationship with God. Milton composed this sonnet to express his frustration and initial crisis of faith resulting from his blindness. He contemplates how his light, symbolizing both physical sight and his poetic talent, has been diminished before he could complete his life's work. The reference to one talent alludes to the biblical parable in Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 to 30, where talents represent both a unit of currency and one's abilities. Milton's talent has been obscured by his blindness, rendering it death to hide. The poet grapples with his sense of duty to serve his maker through his literary talents. He yearns to present a truthful account of his life's work to God, but despairs over whether God requires him to toil despite his visual impairment. Milton's questioning reflects his inner turmoil and the challenge of reconciling his disability with his devout commitment. Milton refers specifically to the Gospel of Matthew's parable of the talents when he says that one talent is death to hide. Fondly here refers to foolishly optimistic in the sense of the time. Milton's composition of On His Blindness is believed to have occurred between 1652 and 1655, a period when his blindness was advancing. He first included the poem in his autographed notebook, The Trinity Manuscript, which is housed in Trinity College's Wren Library. The poem's number was 19 in his notebook, but was published as 16, a common occurrence in posthumous collections edited by others. The poem's title, On His Blindness, was not necessarily the original. It was assigned later, possibly by Thomas Newton, in his 1761 edition of Milton's poetry. Milton's On His Blindness has continued to resonate with readers due to its themes of faith, adversity, and the human spirit's capacity to find acceptance and grace in the face of challenges. Structurally, the poem adheres to the Petrarchan sonnet form with 14 lines, and the rhyme scheme A B B A A B B A C D E C D E. However, it incorporates Milton's characteristic enjambment, which disrupts traditional sonnet structures. In the poem's thematic exploration, it navigates the evolving relationship between faith and adversity. Initially, Milton grapples with despair and a sense of God's demanding nature. He questions whether God expects labor when his sight is denied. However, as the poem progresses, Milton's perspective shifts. He comes to the realization that God is merciful and does not demand the impossible. 
Instead, it is one's willingness to bear life's challenges with patience and grace that truly matters. The themes encompass the internal journey of faith and acceptance in the face of adversity. While the poem centers on Milton's blindness, it transcends the personal to explore universal themes of faith, resilience, and the evolving nature of one's relationship with the divine. Through its profound reflections, On His Blindness continues to inspire and resonate with readers facing their trials and tribulations.